What's going on? Today I'm going to take an HP part that is purely PA12 uh, nylon in a gray bead blast color and we're going to dye it red and see what happens. So uh, come along, check it out and uh, I'll show you how easy it is to dye parts. A lot of places want you to believe it's really tricky and really difficult. You need all this fancy equipment to do it. I'm going to show you how you can do it if you go and spend $7 at Goodwill on a flat stove and two really cheap pots. Uh, a container of writ dye and some water right out of the spigot. We're literally going to do it outside even. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can dye your HP parts if you were camping. Be pretty cool. Check it out. All right, all right, here we are outside. I got a couple of these supplies set up for you already. I'll kind of show you real quick. We've got just basically an old propane camping stove. I mean, nothing super special here. Again, showing you how you can dye parts on a, on a budget. Propane can. We've got two containers. One is gonna be our big dye pot. This is the one we're gonna put the dye in, actually. The dye we're using, which today I'm just using some um, RIT Dye More Synthetic. Uh, this is just a, a liquid. You can get these at Walmart or Amazon for like five to eight bucks a bottle. Super cheap. Everyone can get them. Not a big deal. Nothing special there. No crazy trade secrets. All this stuff. I'm telling you. Again, five to eight dollars. We got a smaller bottle or a smaller uh, little pan here. This is what we're going to put our regular water in. This will be like our rinse pan once we get done dying. Some grabbas, as my daughter would say with her accent. And our part, HP part. MJF Gray. So that is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna basically uh, get the water up and get it going here. Get dye thrown in, get waters brought up to temperature. We're gonna look for like 183, 184, 185 Fahrenheit on the uh, dye. And then um, I'll keep the other pan off until a little bit later and I'll put it on towards the end. And I'm just bringing that, it's just gonna be base water for a rinse. I'm just gonna bring that up to like 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. And I'll bring you back when I get it all set up. All right, so we've been uh, on the on the heat for about four minutes. You know, it's still uh, I can still touch it. Nothing too crazy, but it is uh, it's not cold anymore. Things are starting to warm up, so we should be uh, I would say probably about the ten or twelve minute mark on here. It'll probably be pretty close. We could throw the dye in and uh, you know get going. So we've had the water has been uh, on the heat for maybe ten or twelve minutes now, and that's about long enough to where you're gonna start seeing these little bubbles and so when you start to see these little bubbles at the bottom you know I mean we've all made macaroni and cheese before I mean you see the little bubbles you start to get excited it's almost time to put the noodles in I mean we're talking the same stuff here with these types of parts so now we've got it up to temperature I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the dyes and um, you know you want to make sure you shake up these dyes really really well if you don't want to get some dye on your fingers you should probably put some gloves on because I promise you it will happen um, we were out here tie dyeing a bunch of shirts yesterday and there's always that one person that's like, ah, I'm cool, I don't need gloves. And then uh, when it's all said and done, their hands are just covered, covered, covered in dye. So uh, that generally happens the same when you're dyeing these parts. Um, pretty funny thing. So don't, don't let that be you. Also, make sure you're not dying in an area over top of something that's important to you. Um, you'll notice I'm dying on top of my patio. Pretty stupid. Um, not the best place to be doing this, but I'm selling my house anyway. It's not really mine, so... Just kidding, I've not sold it yet, and it is still mine very much. So here we go, just gonna add in some of this dye. Again, nothing too, too crazy here. It's literally just like pouring dye into water. You'll see, pretty cool what happens. So that's one whole bottle there. That looks like that might be, that might be enough to do the trick here. We're only, we're only dying one part, so you generally don't need a ton of dye. Um, in your water if you're only doing one or two or three parts if you're doing like 10 or 15 20 parts um or you know again the size really the size is what what really does you know surface area of the part and how much it's going to absorb um of the dye out of the water onto its surface layers so that's kind of what you're looking at there so this is what it looks like after you've added the dye and uh, maybe we'll 
we'll give it a quick spin here just to make sure there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing on the bottom, so we're good there. Let's see, it's pretty pink. I'll probably go ahead and add this other bottle just to be sure that we get the color that we want. Cause yeah, you'll see, it's it's not that red yet. Just trying to get out any streaks, if there's any uh, bits of powder or anything like that that didn't get mixed up real well. We're just trying to make sure we get those so that we don't get those streaks on our part. What you don't want is if you have like little granules of powder, some people use powder for their dye instead of the liquid. And um, you know, if they don't get all the powder mixed in really well, you'll get the powder will create like a sheen on the top of the liquid. When you drop your parts in, they get that line again like it's funky so something that we do yeah yeah pretty good red I mean matches the Coleman red on the camp so pretty close so you know it's not gonna be a bright red part because the part that we're dying is dark gray but if this was a white SLS part you'd get a pretty popping red again this color is called racing red it is from Rit dye five to eight bucks at Walmart no trade secrets here man basic stuff basic stuff it's actually all in most of the manuals all the stuff's online I'm really not showing you anything that you can't find online if you just literally googled how to dye SLS parts or 3d printed parts things like that so I just want to put it together in one easy easy video for you guys so you can kind of see it all and uh, not have to dig too hard on the internet but it's all out there this is all this is all public knowledge all right, here we go. Part in. Now you want to be careful with this. I probably shouldn't just drop it in there because it's going to make a big splash. So I'll grab the part with my little tongs and we'll drop it in like this. I'll just show you like real quickly how it looks. Let me just do a quick dip. So again, you see you're not getting a lot of red soaking in yet. But we'll let it kind of hang out in there for a little bit. And we'll check back later. All right, our part's been in the dye for about 12 minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on this other auxiliary pan. So this is just like a little rinse pan. This is just plain water. We just want this to be a little bit hotter than as hot as we can get out of the spigot. So, um, you know, I, you can go, you can grab hot water, you can grab hot out of your out of your hot water, and it's probably gonna be pretty close. You, you could get away with it if you didn't want to do a double burn setup like this. Um, you could. You could totally just do, um, you know, just hot water and out of the sink is going to be hot enough uh, to get the job done. I'm just going to try and do a little bit warmer because I'm going to try and seal in some of this red color a little bit more than a traditional black. Like if you're just dying parts black, you can go a little bit lower on that rinse temp. Um, but again, since I'm trying to seal in a little bit of extra red into this part and red's not really something that's, it's not really that easy. So that's what I'm going to try and do. All right, we've had part in the water now for, well, in the dive for maybe, uh, I'd say, probably in the eight minute mark now, somewhere in that range. Um, just kind of show you here. It's getting pretty red. Um, this might actually turn out a little bit nicer than I was thinking. You can see it was kind of over blasted there in the middle where it's darker. Um, that's just the people that blasted the part that printed this one in particular, uh, just over blasting in that. So if you were to have this in more of like a dye mansion machine, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that as much. Um, but Hey, still a great looking part in red when a lot of people don't do red, so, um, you know, just trying different things. Pretty cool. Prosthetic socket in this color would look pretty, pretty neat. So I'm going to leave it in. I think I'm going to probably go 15 to 18 minutes on this part because I'm going to really, really, really try to do a good job on it um, and really, really get it to soak in, so we'll see. All right, so we've had the part in for like 20, I think I left it in for 20 minutes, so we're going to take it out. We're just literally going to, I'm going to swirl it around here one more time, and then see it. It's going to look really dark right now, but when we put it in here, it'll lighten it back up. And then after use and stuff, it'll lighten up as well. So we'll just leave it in there now for about two to three minutes, 
I'll take it out. I'll take it over there and spray it off with the hose and we'll be all done. I'm going to go ahead and kill the propane. These temps are where we need them. So that's already off. Everything's back to normal and cooling down. And then we're just going to make sure this part stays submerged in the clear water for the full time. Alright, got the part out, got it rinsed. I didn't show you the rinsing because it's literally just holding the part under some water. Pretty stupid. There you go. Some cool sunlight. You can see it's starting to dry here, so it'll dry and that'll spread out and you'll get that lighter color that it, it'll end up being. It's starting to dry out a little here. You can see in the sunlight, it's kind of soaking up that water real quick here. Yeah, kind of see it come to. Oh, go away. Uh, pretty simple. Just change the color of dye that you put in the machine. Know that you're going to get a little darker version of what you what you think you're going to get because you're dyeing gray, not dyeing white. And if you're looking for a lighter color, just go lighter in the color spectrum. So if you want like a green, maybe try yellow or chartreuse and as a dye color, and it might water and you know it might end up being about a green by the time you get all done. So. Just kind of think like that. Think a, think a shade or two darker and you'll be okay. Um, don't try and match a Pantone or anything like that. Like you're just not gonna. Good luck. Uh, call Dimension, Mansion, but I don't have fun. Uh, so yeah, that's a setup that you can pretty much pick up for 20 bucks, not counting the table at thrift stores and garage sales. So that's that. Thanks for watching. Maybe next time I'll do my future crafts. All right, so that's that on dying parts for today. And uh, I told you just one part, super quick one today. Had fun doing it on the little camp stove setup. Uh, you know, this is not how I usually dye parts. I'm uh, just waiting to move out of state. I'd be like three weeks left here in Ohio, so I wasn't gonna spend a ton of money to be able to dye a certain part. I literally had all these items in my camping um, equipment in, in the basement. So went out, grabbed a couple of bottles of dye, and you, you make do with what you have. But I figured it'd be a really cool video. And uh, you know, uh, haven't been able to really post a lot lately because I've been kind of waiting to move and in transition so I thought this would be a really fun way to kind of uh, uh, you know come up with something to share with you guys but I also think it's pretty cool you know if you're ordering parts from from people and you just need to hit a color you know you can actually do that so um, and no trade secrets here we, lo we love to share this is all stuff you can find on the internet this is nothing crazy I didn't come up with this myself um, you know, I just wanted to put it together in a video, make it easy for other people to see how to do it uh, so more folks can make it happen. But uh, if you have any questions on this process, colors, turnouts, um, anything like that, 3D printing, geometry, HP MJF parts, um, you know, prosthetic sockets, anything like that, um, just reach out, let me know, hit up the comments, um, you know, throw down a like if, if this thing, uh, if this is a good video for you. Um, that helps, of course. Um, all that mumbo jumbo that everybody else says. Hit the subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, all you know how to do all that. Cooling down here, we'll get it taken away, and then uh, I mean the pooch, man, it's time for the lunch. I go inside, see what steps up to, and uh, that'll be it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.